Jason Hug, Reading Magazine, here with local photographer Mateo Toro. He's going to talk about his recent trips to Colombia and Cuba coming up. <music> Sponsored by Oak Brook Brewing Company, now open in Reading's historic Oak Brook Fire Station. By the Salt Lounge in Why I'm Missing. Relax, unplug, and breathe. And by the Digital Cloud Company, your business in the cloud. And we're back with Mateo Toro, local photographer. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how you got into photography. Well, Jason, thank you for having me on oh, Reading well, Magazine. Yeah. Um, well, how I got into photography was I have been doing video production for about three years. Mm -hmm. And I use primarily mirrorless cameras. So as you know, they're really small. And everywhere I would go to film an event or film a video, people would think I was actually the photographer just because of the size of the cameras. They expected, like, mm. you know, a TV style broadcast camera. And I would be like, no, I'm the video <laughs> videographer. You're just doing videos, yeah. And over three years, I figured, you know, everyone thinks I'm a photographer. I sure learned this style of this medium as well. I mean, mm -hmm. that sounds like a business opportunity. There's demand there. So um, I decided to learn photography while I was um, traveling Colombia last year. Okay. And that's kind of really how I got into it. Into the photography. Then. Into photography. Yeah. So, but you said you were already doing video in uh, Colombia, then, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. tell tell us a little bit about that trip. So, Colombia, I primarily went out there simply because, well, I had just graduated college, okay, and I figured this is the perfect time to do one of those crazy one in a lifetime backpacking <laughs> trips, just because <laughs> I'm out of college, I don't have student loans hitting me just yet. I yeah, don't have right? kids, big priorities. Mm -hmm. Perfect opportunity, perfect time to travel. So time to get away. Yeah, yeah, time to get away exactly. And so while I was out there, I primarily just wanted to travel, but also to really get my foot in the door into travel content, travel photography, and working with tourism boards. That's something that oh, okay. I really wanted always to do. So yes, I was going out there to just have fun, mm -hmm. but uh, as well as being focused and serious on the next style of my business. So what are, what are the uh, the travel tourism boards looking for? So tourism boards, you know, they really want to show off the best of their country or mm -hmm. if it's a local tourism board of their city or their county. They want either the best photo that you can possibly think of or a mm. video that really shows the ins and outs of the city um, what people are looking for already on google so that's a great way for an aspiring person who wants to work with tours and boards or travel content like just go on google see what people are searching okay and, and maybe make some content out of that and that's what was my goal going into columbia like I know it was the cities I, I had toured out, mm -hmm. and, I, and I made an itinerary, and I knew the kind of videos that I wanted to make from my style. So they didn't necessarily contract you to do that. Uh, you submit it essentially to them. Yeah, I okay. went out there with no contacts, no you know business networking. Mm -hmm. It was more of like, let me make a video myself, and then tag them on Instagram, tag them on Twitter, send it to them directly through an email, and, okay. and hopefully they will pick it up or, you know, see it uh, themselves and then say, hey, we want to work with you. Did, did they end up picking and, it up? And ended up picking up. I uh, did a few um, photography um, jobs with them okay. and, and uh, one of the, some videos as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, of what? Um, so it's my, my personally, my best photo out of Colombia last year was in the lost city of Colombia. Mm -hmm. It's about 600 years older than Machu Picchu, hmm. and it the the photo took four days to get because you literally had to walk four days to just get to the destination <laughs> and so it's this ancient relic uh place where indigenous people used to live in the middle of the jungle mm -hmm. and i was able to work with the tourism board on that project right there that was my favorite project working with them yeah i'd say a lot of people don't realize uh what's behind a photo a lot of the time how how much work it right. really takes right. to get something when you say that that's four days yeah you know that's like i said that that's hiking in that's you know there's a whole bunch of production mm -hmm. work in there just to get a single photo a lot of people don't really yeah realize i mean that all the time. and i worked yeah. with you earlier mm -hmm. this year and we went to uh mount gretna mm -hmm. and we worked at a triathlon and it was pouring rain for five hours <laughs> and, and people see like the <laughs> best about that, they right. see the best <laughs> 10 to 15 photos and it's like wow this is a great moment but no we were standing yeah, there for well, five the, hours the photos did turn out well yeah. but yeah it was not pleasant being soaked head to toe so yeah rain, people so. don't see what goes yeah. behind even just a single photo and i didn't know that myself either mm -hmm. being that i was just a videographer i had a whole different mind state i thought photo pff, that's easy you know <laughs> that's why i don't even want to do photography anyone right can do right that. yeah anyone can do that. but yeah. it, it does take a certain level of skill and, and dedication for you know a great photo especially with tourism and boards and, and learning it too mm -hmm. and uh you were telling me earlier that uh you put together uh vlog style yeah. videos for uh for gear reviews mm -hmm. camera reviews things like that yeah so on my personal channel mateo toro that you know i've never publicly said i've had um, I do primarily travel content, um, gear reviews of cameras or lenses or whatever mm -hmm. you could think of, and 
that's mainly the focus on that channel and that's where i was placing these videos um from columbia okay and tagging them and title them a certain way that way hopefully somebody from the tourism board will see them as well mm -hmm. and just a new audience as well you know you always especially in a in the digital world that we live in, mm -hmm. you do want a global audience. And right, right. So and that's a lot of social media gives you that, too. It, exactly. So yeah. it's a great way to really, um, if you don't have the the contacts or the, the personnel to, to contact yourself, you know, just put out content yourself and, and market it on your own. Yeah, so you also do uh, a lot of work locally. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you do here in Reading. So, funny enough, I did start a company right before I left Columbia, okay. um, Rhetorical. That is my video production company. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started, I worked here for two months and then I leave to Columbia for almost six months. <laughs> and while I'm in Columbia, everyone's like, Hey, we need videos. We need videos. I'm like here in Reading, here in yeah, Reading. Right I'm here. like, wow. Well, you know, I'm kind of far away. Yeah. I might come back. Who knows? Yeah. But you know, eventually, uh, this is home. This is where I grew up. This is where I went to school at. This is where I went to college at. Mm -hmm. Um, so I decided it was a great, uh, it was a great idea to come back. You know, I had my home base mm -hmm. here and I had, uh, enough context to maybe hopefully make this video production thing a full-time job because I didn't apply for any corporate jobs after college. Mm -hmm. So um, Rhetorical, that is what I primarily do all my work under. So it's a video production company. We also just added photography this year mm. um, for services as well. So what do you do? So the primary thing we focus on is um, local business commercials, what I like to call them. So okay. uh, videos that can be used to promote your services or your business um, that can be placed on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. But also we also provide content services. So if you don't want to go just the overly promotional route like this is my business this is where we're located at mm -hmm. then i also offer content services where you know we could shoot content once a month or twice a month or three times a month to keep promoting your business in a really more personal level to okay. connect with the community to show off what you you are doing and also in that sense promote your business just indirectly yeah so it's a little bit more than uh, i guess your your typical marketing or even advertising yeah coupons or you know things like exactly that. like, a, really like if there. a business wants me to do like a commercial for them it'll be 30 seconds to a minute mm -hmm. it's like this is us this is where we are this is what we do come check us out and mm -hmm. that's kind of simple and that works don't get me wrong but nowadays you know people have the option of just keep scrolling right yeah and, and, and they yeah. want to connect, connect more on a personal level so content is really more of the the bulk of my business so you had an opportunity to teach a rack this summer i heard yeah so i had an incredible opportunity to teach uh digital photography uh digital media this summer at rack with okay. upper bound it's a program between rack university and reading high school hmm. so the, it was a summer program for over three weeks that i got to work with high school students from reading high from ninth to 12th grade and it was an amazing opportunity. I never thought that I would teach one day, let alone so new into photography that I would be teaching this to other people, mm -hmm. especially younger folks. And the caveat was I was only able to use smartphones. So it wasn't oh, okay. like we had actual DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. I personally had to go into and learn how to use a smartphone for, for photography as well. Mm -hmm. So within that program, um, I had a lot of fun. It was a great experience. And, you know, I want to shout myself out. The students <laughs> rated my class the highest. But I also had the fun class. So, right, yeah. Right. So, you know. <laughs> but um, within that, I did have opportunity to teach a student documentary photography because they were just doing it on their own. Oh, okay. And it wasn't in the curriculum. Because they're putting together a documentary. Right, they were okay. putting a documentary. And within that, I, I, I really saw how much they enjoyed it and how kind of simple they were just – sharing their art mm -hmm. that I kind of wanted to step back and, hey, I want to try this myself as well. Like, I am doing a lot of business stuff, commercial stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to make me make art in a sense myself. I yeah, guess I've yeah. never been like an artist, more from the prism's perspective. So I decided I wanted to go to Cuba. Um, okay. Cuba is always something that's interested in me. I, I've never known really anything about it other than it's a communist country. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the doors just opened up a few years ago. So I figured, you know, let me Now go it's to time Cuba. to go. Now it's time to go. So... <laughs> I only spent there three and a half days, okay. Um, and literally all I did was I would walk, I don't know, 10 to 13 miles a day just shooting photos. Um, mm. I didn't shoot any video down in Cuba. I really wanted to master um, documentary photography and just capturing moments that... Like yeah, street photography? Street photography, like okay. yeah. Like, I can't go back to Cuba tomorrow and get the photos I got right. while yeah, I was right. in September. Mm -hmm. So, um, within, so a little bit different objective than Colombia, then. Right, 100%. Right. Colombia was, like, from a business standpoint, like, tourism standpoint, show mm -hmm. off the best of the best. Um, Cuba was, like, let me... Let me capture a moment. Let me show what's real and something okay. that can't be replicated mm -hmm. um, just to push myself in another style of a photography. Yeah, there's so yeah. many, you know, so many places you could go with a camera. So this is something I wanted to try. So you brought a few uh, prints from mm -hmm. uh, Cuba. Yeah. So uh, 
I had no goal in Cuba. It was just to take photos myself personally, but mm -hmm. you know, I thought they looked pretty good. <laughs> Um, and I guess you can be the judge for that. Yeah, judge you, of that. Can, you can be the judge for that. I thought they were pretty good photos. And when I came back, I had so many because I was, you know, walking around for 10 and 13 miles. Mm -hmm. That yeah, how many photos did you take? Down? I have over 5,000. Oh, wow. Not, yeah. not all 5,000 are great, but yeah, I, I have enough this. that I'm actually gonna uh, release a coffee table book next year. A okay. photography coffee table book, first thing, product I'm ever releasing myself personally. Hmm. Um, and that'll be coming out in March. And but I do have some prints right here. Yeah. So for the people to check out, these are samples, um, eight by tens. This is a stroll through Old Havana. Uh, again, it's a moment that I just captured. I don't even remember taking this photo, but it was in my SD card when I got back. You know, <laughs> so it's something well, that five thousand photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Kind of so it's something that's special because mm -hmm. um, it's just a, a moment in time. You know. So we have that one. That's actually my most popular print right now. Oh, okay. Um, I'm selling them in 16 by 20, so double the size of these. And then this is a Cuba frozen in time. Hmm. Um, this is more for like you know decoration. If you have like old school business or or you know barbershop or mm -hmm. bar, I think that fits better um, than like the other one. It's more so what were you looking for so. exactly when you were taking these photos? I mean, I know you said it was a lot of street, yeah, a lot of you know candid moments kind of stuff. Yeah. But was were there anything specific you were looking for? Well, I, I forgot like to mention style. Or yeah, anything? I forgot to mention. I actually contacted a photographer from the Havana Times. Oh, okay. Um, he actually replied. He was like, "Hey, I'd love to show you old Havana places where it's not touristic and hmm. people don't really mm -hmm. normally venture. We could walk for two to three hours, and I'll show you how I shoot my uh my journalistic approach. Oh, okay. Um, where I just like he was crazy man like uh i was walking behind him in like a crowded area and he would literally just like grab his camera and snap a photo in front of someone like like <laughs> he's like this close to them and and you would think maybe this person's gonna punch him or right yeah or he's gonna, like, <laughs> kick the camera out of his face but uh i think that's something i learned from him that is more people will appreciate it if, if you take the photo and you look at them and you kind of can tell like there's a connection there like hey mm -hmm. this is a photo it's a moment in time and we both agree that you know it's legal so yeah that's like ultra yeah street ultra knowledge. street right. ultra like you know. hyper journalistic yeah. like where you you know and and now that i went to cuba and i took those photos i've been mm -hmm. studying like old war photography um 1920s okay. photography from like ansel adams um james herzog and people who really um decided to take photography in a different place because mm -hmm. back in the day um, now that I've been teaching myself a little bit about the mm -hmm. history of photography, people, when they first started, they were trying to make photography look like art mm -hmm. because it wasn't respected as a medium back then. Right. It was just like, oh, you have like this little flash and boom <laughs> and smoke yeah. and artists who painted and, and then murals are like, that's not art. And, and that's kind of how photography really came what it is as yeah, far as a little as, bit more time to kind of put it together. Yeah. It wasn't as more of a snap. Yeah. A hundred percent. So my, my, my approach was. Let me just, you know, really get better at not being afraid of taking a photo on a street without any permission. Let me get fo right. better at capturing this moment that no one else is seeing right now, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, taking a good look around and seeing, oh, that's that's a great moment. Boom. So, now that I've started selling prints, and to my surprise, more than one person bought one, <laughs> um, I actually was on Penn Street. It's good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. Uh, I was on Penn Street just randomly taking street photos, mm -hmm. and I look up, and for the first time... I kind of noticed how uh, how beautiful the architecture on Penn Street is. Like we have some really historic buildings, mm -hmm. buildings that are one of them's considered one of the first skyscrapers in America, which is the Collar Hill Building. Mm -hmm. So I just snap a photo with my phone and I go get a haircut at Fineland's Barbershop. Shout out to Chris. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> one I of your clients, right? Yeah, yeah. one of my clients. <laughs> well, one of my barbers too. You know, and I show him I show him the photo on my phone. He's mm -hmm. like, "Yo, I love this photo. I need this printed. Can you go back and?" and get this photo, you know, taken mm -hmm. so you could uh, blow it up and frame it for me. And not, that's pretty cool because now I have this moment where, you know, I could teach a younger person, a, a student, that, hey, mm -hmm. look, always be taking photos because you never know how great it might be. Right. That someone is willing to, to pay for them. And you might not think it's a great photo, but someone else will. And that's kind of like the art thing that mm -hmm. is hard to understand. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I, I took two photos of the historic buildings on Penn Street, uh, the Cowley Hill Building and what was considered the Burks Community Trust Building. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, are you planning to do uh, more things in the city? Yeah, I, re I really want architecture wanted... or any... Yeah, well, I w oh, funny enough, I wanted to be an architect one day, which okay. hopefully when I'm 50 and with, like, gray hair, I'll do that <laughs> at some point. But, um, yeah, I want to really start exploring Reading a bit more, not with, like, open eyes and, mm -hmm. and a different perspective 
going to Cuba, going to Colombia, and even like this moment with the Penn Street photos to really see how much great things there are, not just in Reading, but in Berks County. So where can we find some of your work locally? So if you want to find my work, you can go to my website, rhetorical.com slash print slash. Um, I have the prints that I have for sale right now on there. You can buy them directly through the website, mm -hmm. or you can contact me, message me, send me an email. You can find me on social media, the Mateo Toro, across all the platforms, or follow my business page, Rhetorical, on all platforms as well. And the book? And the book. So my coffee table book will be releasing in March. Um, you can... Pre-order them real soon, and if you're a Reading Magazine viewer or subscriber, you'll be getting a discount as well. Um, me and Jason will set that up for you. Cool. Thanks. So, <laughs> Jason, I'm really, really grateful you had me here. This is really cool. Yeah, thanks for coming in and talking about your trips. Uh, this is awesome. Hopefully, you can come back in a little while, and you've been, I don't know, somewhere else. Australia, I don't know. Hopefully. But <laughs> Let's do it. International traveler and <laughs> everything. Thanks for coming in, though. All right, Jason. All right. Appreciate it.